uh, aired an overview of Bitcoin, explaining both how some folks have made money from the new currency and how many see it as a speculative bubble. The Chinese government, which has more than a dozen agencies regulating media and information flow, clearly wants its population to know about Bitcoin despite the successful global use of the currency to circumvent capital controls and undermine central authority. Governmental aspects China takes quite seriously. If China successfully aids the proliferation of Bitcoin, the implications on the global currency system could be monumental. Rather than having to use US dollars as an intermediary currency or establish swap lines to support international trade, a world conducting trade with Bitcoin would mean the US dollar currently used for this purpose would be leaked as additional supply in the Forex markets, driving down the value of the US dollar. Which is what a lot of people claim they want, well, uh, I think they're going to get it and driving up borrowing rates for the US. This change on a large scale would drastically accelerate the effects of the inflationary policies already taken up by the Federal Reserve. A significant inflationary trend in US dollars could potentially create a devastating cycle as global banks looking to preserve their wealth seek alternative reserve currencies even further reducing the dollar's value. The effect in China and on the Bitcoin market is already being realized. Bitcoin wallet software has been downloaded nearly 40,000 times since the program aired three days ago. That's almost seven times the number downloaded in the US over the same period and 13 times the rate of downloads in China leading up to the report. If this trend continues, we may have just witnessed the single most significant event in Bitcoin history since the currency's inception. And they give you a map here with the downloads. So that is fascinating. You can see here 97% on the Windows download. So that's uh, incredible. 39,000 users are using Windows and they downloaded uh, 39,000 as opposed to 6,000 in the US, 1,000 in the UK, and 1,000 in Germany. And that would be absolutely staggering. I don't even need to do the math for you. There are only about 11 million Bitcoins out there. The population in China is 1.3 billion. So if the Chinese, and you have to remember, the Chinese, if you look at the rate of engineers that they're graduating, the number of computer scientists that they have, uh, how advanced they are in mathematics, they're very, very advanced. If there is a flaw in the Bitcoin, trust me, the Chinese are going to find it. And uh, it appears that there isn't. So I wanted to show you some anecdotal information just from my observations here, whether this is true or not. So let me take you over to my uh, silver blog and that uh, you can see it has been active on revolver maps since December 25th of 2011. That's when I activated this revolver map on my silver channel. And you can see since that time there have been 4,374,000 visits to my silver blog. Uh, there are 76 cities online, nine countries online right now. If we go down and look at the map, you can see when we go over to China, you can see the vast bulk of the people on my silver channel are in the United States. Uh, a fairly decent following in Europe. Now it's the time of day there, of course. And uh, there's some in China. For the longest time, I really never had any one in China, but you can see here is the number, any of these dots that you see, these red dots, uh, that's a city that is visited the blog. And uh, so that is out of 4,374,000 hits on that over the course of uh, two years or so. 
you can see the number in China. Now let's go over to my Bitcoin blog and you can see there's only 13 cities online right now and since I turned the revolver map up on March 5th of 2013 there have only been 122,000 visits so that's a fraction uh, less than a quarter of a percent of the traffic that's gone on to my silver block but if we go down to the globe here and we take a look at the number of visits from China you can see when we do the comparison that the number of visits from China on the Bitcoin blog is starting to approach the number that's already on the silver blog over the course of two years you can see if you look at India there's India for silver there's India for Bitcoin uh, here's uh, Indonesia and all of Southeast Asia for silver and for Bitcoin so you can see a very large concentration coming in from China so this definitely confirms the article If we look at Europe there's Europe's interest in my Bitcoin blog uh, there's silver so they all seem to be the United States and the United States you can see that there's not anywhere near the interest uh, for Bitcoin in the United States as there is for silver so that definitely confirms just anecdotally what we're seeing here and uh, I, I don't even know what the price of the Bitcoin could be if uh, even 10 percent of the Chinese population decided that they wanted a Bitcoin that would mean that uh, 130 million people want a Bitcoin and obviously that's 10 times the number of Bitcoins that exist so maybe they would have to be satisfied with having a Satoshi or 10 Satoshis or something like that because uh, there just aren't that many Bitcoins to go around. Maybe they will buy up some of the alternative cryptocurrencies and there are a lot out there. Uh, we'll go over and cover in the next episode. Uh, this is BTC-E. Uh, we've got new ones on here. We've got the CNC coin and that apparently is a Chinese coin I haven't had time to investigate what's behind that we've got the feather coin here added as well so more virtual currencies coming online of course uh, any successful virtual currency is going to be able to satisfy these requirements uh, that have to do with foreign exchange have to do with capital controls again as I pointed out before even if the Bitcoin doesn't succeed, the idea of an unbreakable peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency is going to be a game changer in the system of world trade. And uh, this China thing may be that happening right now. And we'll talk to you next time.